So Movie Space Jump and I went to Victoria, BC about two weeks ago to pick this guy up because this guy has no head. So upon touring the city and being rejected in a few different places, we stumbled upon... Why, hello, YouTube! Greetings from the Rizzy Eyebrow Reviewer. Today I have another Masterpiece review. Hasbro's Masterpiece Optimus Prime. The American release of MP10, and oh man, is he ever a sick-looking truck. A far better upgrade to the MP01, 02, and 04, even though 02 is Ultra Magnus. Not to mention a far better upgrade in price paint, too. MP10 runs about $300 at the moment. For two of them, you can get yourself a fan's project Hercules. This guy was at Toys R Us for only $99.99. So let's get on to the review. MP10 is an amazing truck, extremely well detailed in almost every way. There aren't too many lines in the truck towards transformation, and that's a good thing. Where I find they are, they blend in quite well. The headlights in the bumper are chromed out. The headlights look like actual headlights instead of random dots in the front of a truck. If you can call it a truck. Running lights in the truck are painted and stand out quite nicely. The trailer is on a swivel hinge connected to the back of the truck. Rivets riddle the sides of the truck. Exhaust pipes look amazing. Not to mention the flip-out side mirrors in the front of the truck. This is definitely a wicked truck. Rubber tires are featured, which are definitely a bonus. No shocks though, but you know what, I really don't find that all that much of a downside. Like, oh no, Spike's gonna feel every single pothole on the road to victory. No big deal, really. The iconic stands on the side of the trailer are somewhat concealed by the fencing on the bottom of the trailer, which doesn't make the stand stick out like a sore thumb in any way, shape, or form, which is pretty cool. The trailer looks actually pretty good from the back. Rivet details everywhere, molded latch with the doors open, translucent red taillights, Jakar and Hasbro really went to town on this figure. Heck, the trailer even has mud flaps. Not this abyssal retard, but real mud flaps. Now I'm going to start with the accessories with Prime, just like my G1 review. Also, just like the G1, this truck has fold-out stands, except when extended, these stands sit flush with the ground. They're also on a gear which extend as you pull them out. So let's get Prime out of here, we'll get to him later. The trailer also comes with another set of stands if you want to display the trailer closed and standing by itself. Just bring the two posts down from the front of the trailer, retract the sides, and Bob's your uncle. This trailer is detailed everywhere. It has a really detailed roof, sculpted sides, even the Autobot symbol isn't just a sticker this time. An upgrade from the G1 toys is the door is open, but that doesn't mean there's no ramp. Once the doors are open, the ramp extends and lowers to allow all your Autobot friends in and out. Mainly the Roller lives in here by the way, but that doesn't mean others can't fit in here. For instance, deluxe class movie figures. Ooh, that just reminded me of Knight Rider. G1 Optimus, or Ultra Magnus, Astro Train, Uncharismatic Boar Soundwave, No one calls Soundwave an Uncharismatic Boar! Bumblebee, General Lee, and a mystery surprise figure perhaps coming soon? Roller is a little six-wheeled robot located inside Optimus trailer that I only ever remember appearing twice in the original cartoon, but I guess it was a nice addition. I mean, the G1 toy had it, so why not this guy? Wheels are made of plastic, but they roll quite nicely. Perhaps that's why he's Roller. The flap up top opens to a little spot for Roller to carry Optimus Iron Blaster. Now he looks rather deadly, doesn't he? His back also opens up, and the top flips around to reveal an extra trailer hitch. You know, for those times when Optimus is out of commission, and needs a hand, and Huffer isn't around to lend one. Optimus also comes with a little spike. He actually doesn't look too bad. Could use some facial detailing, but oh well, it's only $100, can't really complain too much. Articulation includes a hip and knee joint and an arm swivel. And look! He can fit inside Roller for no real reason other than to appeal to my inner child! Flipping this trailer over allows us to get a good look underneath. Look at all this unnecessary detail. A spare tire, air brake lines for the rear axles, rivets. All of this was nowhere near needed. Nor am I going to really ever see it, but I still am impressed. So let's open up this trailer and get a good look inside. Make sure to have these stands open first. Roller can drive up and chill out in this trailer as if it was his own home. Which, come to think of it, it actually is. Spike can fit in various positions around the trailer like tactical, operations, and even help control, which brings me to the repair drone. Once again, this little pod is on a triple hinge tower and contains a triple hinge claw and a swivel satellite. A cool feature for this trailer is having these panels be able to fold in to allow this nostalgic option of having the command center peeking out having a grand old time up top. Pod can rotate and both sides of the claw can open. 
The trailer, when opened, can once again be used by Optimus for being repaired on the fly. But because we have Spike on the job, now he can do it. So let's get on to Optimus now. To do that, we must get rid of the trailer. Optimus, as mentioned earlier, is quite the fantastic little truck. Unlike MPO-1, he actually looks like a truck. Even standalone, like MPO-1 was, this truck would just be fine with me. But of course, I'm more than happy to get a trailer to come along with it. To transform him, unclip the headlights and bumper and swing the front sides of the truck out and down. Push the exhaust pipes up, pull out the arms from the cab, open the bottom of the arm and rotate the hand out. Kinda wish this was push out, but what are you gonna do? They needed it this way to make such an amazing truck mode. Flip up the fender stairs and pull the arm down. Open the front windows, rotate the head up, push the grill and fender in and close the bumper over top. Then close the windshield. Rotate the fenders 180 degrees and fold it into the body. Then fold the headlights and the sides of the bumper in. Next, rotate the torso up, back and down until the chest grill clicks into place. You'll need to open the windows again for this. Extend the legs down to reveal his grayer than gray thighs. Flip the bottom panels around to cover the wheels and move the gas tanks down to finish covering the rest of the wheels. Flip the inner panel up and around to reveal his shin vents. Flip the feet down and rotate the torso and you're done. And here he is. Masterpiece Optimus Prime. Part of the two Masterpiece Transformers that came out to the US this year. Both of them are equally awesome and I'm having a hard time picking my favorite to be honest. In other case, you should at least get one. They're quite worth it. Just try and steer clear of eBay if you can. Optimus comes with two weapons. His ion blaster which pegs into his palm and looks pretty darn accurate to the show. His energy axe fits ever so nicely on his right hand only though. Very reminiscent of that one scene that one time and was never used again. But thanks Hasbro, you guys rock for giving us the memorabilia we only remember for that one episode, that one time, and that one series. Like the Seekers, and their chest rockets. Roller, and now the axe. This axe I found also snugly fits on leader class Revenge of the Fallen Optimus, and this kinda works for a size comparison too. So here's all his accessories. Now, one thing I noticed, one of the accessories is missing, but they gave us something else instead, and that would be Spike. So what didn't they give us? Well, Tiny Gun Megatron, of course. Honestly, I'm a little bummed out not having one. I wanted one for the little clip that came with Thundercracker, so I came up with two solutions. One, I could take my anger out on Spike and get Thundercracker to fly to 50,000 feet with him attached to the nose cone. Or the other more feasible option, steal the Ion Blaster and plug it in here. Both work for me, really. As for storage for these accessories, Optimus' blaster can fold up and live inside Optimus' back, which I thought was a pretty cool feature. Having his blaster with him at all times, so when he transforms, it's right there waiting to fill a Decepticon with hot ions. Flipping Optimus' arm reveals a little gap. This works as a seat for Spike when in truck mode. Which is pretty cool, you can have Spike driving, oh da, -da, -da, -da. Spike can also store inside Roller when inside the trailer, or inside the command deck. Both options work at all times, whereas the Optimus option only works in truck mode. The axe also stores in here and is the only place it can go when not in use whether the trailer is open or closed. The Ion Blaster fits in on the other side of the trailer, but I'd rather leave it inside Optimus. It fits better there. And Little Roller, when the trailer is all closed up, can fit inside so snugly. Close the trailer up and you're ready to roll with all the accessories in one little package. Optimus himself looks amazing in robot mode. I like how accurate he looks in truck mode. That blew my mind. And then his accuracy to his G1 robot really takes the cake. None of this weird chest grill of MP1, nothing. Just Optimus Prime and does he ever look sick. As for articulation, Optimus head is on a post, which also has a hinge for up and down views. Because it's not a ball joint, you can't get cocking of his head, but he can still get some decent head angles. Windows open up to reveal the bumper, which then opens up to reveal a black plate. Behind this black plate, you open it up and there's the die-cast Autobot Matrix of Leadership, except in color this time, unlike the Hot Rod Edition. Kinda small though, and it can't open. But no matter, it still looks pretty awesome regardless. And this final accessory pops right back into his chest. Arms swivel 360 degrees. Pulling them out gives you a bit of tilt. Bicep swivel. And 90 degree arms. Which is a bit of a disappointment for me. Like I know other people complain about it. And really to them, they say it's kind of a small complaint. Nothing too major. To me, it seriously hinders my stop motioning. Not by much, but enough to really get on my nerves. Optimus hands are less articulated than MP11. Three fingers are on one hinge, index on a hinge with an extra one for the first two sections of the finger, and the thumb is locked in place. The hand does swivel, however, so yes, he can point, but 
that's about it, really. Waist swivels 360 degrees. Legs move forward, backward, and out with a very slick ratcheting joint. Knees rotate and also are on an awesome ratchet, but they bend forward for some reason. I guess if you're ever in a horrible accident, maybe? I don't know. Feet don't rotate, unfortunately, but they do swing in for an amazing wide-legged stand. Look, he's a bridge! Now, with all this articulation, we can get into some pretty sweet poses. Now, Spike, you listen to me. I want you to ignore that girl, Carly. She is not your friend. You hear me? It's good to be back, Autobots. Thank you for reviving me. Now, who's been in charge while I've been down? Oh, kill me now. Victor Sigma, Spike, you didn't listen to me. Now we have another one of those runts running around this base. We don't run a daycare. And now back to cooking with Prime. Hello, all you Cybertronians out there. I'm Optimus Prime. Today we're going to make Spike Souffle. Now for this, it's best to use live Spike. This one's just asleep, but I assure you he's still alive. Now, make sure his head is away from you when you do this. You don't want him to see what you're doing. Now, pull out your knife. Warning, sharp objects involved. And now we're going to take it off right there. Ugh. I can't look. Okay, here we go. Cooking with Prime will be right back after these matches. Ratchet! Ratchet, get over here with the med kit now! I may be a Prime, but that doesn't mean I can't be a captain. Whack a spike! I'm a bot. And I smell like a bot. And I headlock Decepticons like a bot. Fresh. But I don't care. Because I'm a bot. New Sentinel Cybertronian Mist. In stores now. Epic shooting and fighting scene. And that classic stance Optimus always has during the commercial breaks. So that does it for Toys R Us exclusive masterpiece Optimus Prime. He's quite the awesome figure and I highly recommend picking him up as he's well worth the money. Especially if you're thinking about getting MP10. Even though eBay is usually more expensive with scalpers and whatnot. The uh, cheapest one I've seen is 160 so far. It's still worth paying them to get this figure as opposed to the MP10 at a $300 price point. This has been the Lazy Eyebrow Reviewer.